what is up everybody had to be then with another game guide for you this time we are looking at tribes of midgard this game doesn't really tell you what it wants you to do so i thought i'd go ahead and make a video to help you out this video will go from day one all the way to getting to the final boss if you've tried the saga blind you know it can be confusing so hopefully it helps it's easy to get lost in this game since you have so many things that you want to complete at the same time in order to be ready to fight the boss so i'll be breaking it down into three things the first one is to make sure that you are well equipped and ready to fight every jotun and fenrir itself we're gonna look at repairing the bridge and fixing the port i find that having it broken down into these three things makes it a little bit more manageable and um, this guide will allow you to finish a solo game in about an hour um, in this case here this was two playing sessions one of about 20 minutes the other one of about 40 minutes um, so if you don't have a lot of time uh, this is a nice way to do it so the first thing you want to do is destroy as many barriers as you see me doing right now as you can to get the materials to build your quarry that's what you need in order to get all of the stone and iron that you need to repair the bridge. Here you also see me going down to the ash beach and that symbol on my map means that there is a sorcerer here. We're gonna need this sorcerer in order to buy the hideout fragments just so we can skip the hideout altogether because that's the most time consuming task. And on your first back, you want to build your tools, you want to get your quest, and get your first weapon. For my quest, I always try to choose something that is in the land of pools. Uh, you want to be in the land of pools so you can get all of the thunder materials so you can build your Nornir Axe. If you've not used a Nornir Axe as well, you are missing out. It's probably the strongest weapon in this game. It also gives you a healing ability. Um, so if you're struggling a little bit with any fight, you can just take a few steps back, heal and get straight back into it. At this stage, since we don't have what we need for the Nornir Axe, I'll just make a Raider Axe. That's the second best option. And it's quite cheap since you only need quite basic things such as stone and wolf teeth uh, to upgrade it. As we keep exploring, make sure that you use the paths that gives you a bit of a speed boost. And always at the end of a path, you find a shrine or a teleport point. Um, and that will be the best way for you to find the key points that you're looking for, which are the sorcerer, which we've found already, the land of poles in this case for our quest and the materials for the Nornir Axe and the bridge. Uh, so the more you see off the map, the better off you are. At this stage, we already have enough to upgrade our tools a little bit and to get our nowhere near axe. So we come back to the village and we get that all done. It's really important that you upgrade your tools because that will ensure that you get more stone and iron and you should be harvesting every bit of stone and iron you see on your way just so you have an offer when it comes to building the bridge. Building the bridge is quite costly and gathering the necessary materials as you go will save you quite a lot of time on the long run. At this point, we're halfway through day two and we have enough materials to build the quarry. Please make sure that you do this as soon as possible as it will yield more of the stone and iron that we are just talking about for you to get your bridge done. Another thing to keep in mind is for the first couple of nights you don't need to worry about your village as your NPCs will be strong enough to protect it. The first time you really have to go back and do anything about it is when you have the first blood moon. But we will cross that bridge when we get to it. As I said before, one of your secondary objectives or one of the things that you need to constantly have in your mind is just the pure exploration in order to find the key points. We're in the bright forest right now and that's where you will always find the bridge. The bridge will take you to the glacier and that's a very cold area but you won't have to spend too much time there so you do not have to worry too much about building equipment that protects you from the environment. Also, following this strategy, you completely skip the highlands so also no need to be worried about the heat. 
to build the bridge you'll need 2500 soles, 50 cut stone, 30 wrought iron and 10 engine cores so do you try and keep these numbers in mind. You'll most likely get the ancient course naturally just as you progress through the game. Uh, as you clear the larger camps and they have mini bosses in them, that's where you get them. Just before the night of the third day, I like taking down the first Jotun. You need the Jotun fragments in order to rebuild the portal. Uh, but also, if the Jotun gets to your village, that's pretty much game over. You can let the Jotun get quite close to your village before you do this fight, but I find this to be good timing and I got quite lucky as it spawned really close to my location. So I just take it down. One of the four types of fragments you need in order to repair the portal is the events fragment. Events start randomly somewhere on the map it gives you this yellow perimeter where you have to search for it and in this case we got the stag all you gotta do is find it interact with it and that is it you just need to complete one when you're playing solo in order to have everything you need to repair the portal as you get to the night of the fourth day you want to go back to the village in order to protect us. That will be a blood moon. Blood moon means you get more enemies, stronger enemies, and a couple of mini bosses potentially attacking your village. It's not all of that difficult, even more considering if you have the Narnia Axe at this stage, uh, that your NPCs won't be able to handle it all by themselves. So do come back and give them a hand. Hopefully at this stage you're already ready to repair the bridge. You can see here we've added everything to it and that connects it to this icy area where you just need to explore just enough to find the portal. Sometimes you get lucky and you can see it straight from the other side, sometimes you don't and this is the case. We do have to explore a little bit. I can see the portal symbol on my minimap, so I just activate this shrine and go back to make sure I have everything and I'm all set up to fight the final boss. At this point I noticed I hadn't actually turned my quest in, so I just traveled back to the land of poles to get that done, and once that's complete, you are pretty much ready to go. My recommendation is at this stage, Stop and have a look at your inventory, look at your equipment, make sure that you have all of the stuff you need, make sure you have potions, make sure you have your weapon, weapon fully upgraded, that you have all of your at least level two equipment, I would say defensive equipment, and also go in the morning as you want to have as much time as possible. The nights are a bit tougher right now, so you'd probably want to go back and defend. At day seven, you also have a Jotun available to fight. You don't exactly have to do it, but I don't like to have anything in my mind while fighting the big boss. So I do finish with the Jotun first and then go and finish the saga. I hope you enjoyed and found this guide helpful. If you did, let me know by liking the video, leaving a comment if you have anything to say and subscribe if you wanna see some more. My next upload will be a video specifically about fighting Fenrir. Uh, if you've died after playing for a couple of hours, you know how frustrating it can be. So maybe give that a look before you fight it for the first time. But I see you on my next update. Bye.